You are watching Life on Gabriela TV, community television, for you, by you. So the Gabriola Chamber of Commerce has created a very interesting and intriguing book. It's called Gabriola Thriver Guide and Workbook. And Maria is here from the Chamber and she's going to tell us all about this. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Teresa. It's a pleasure to be here. Wonderful. So tell me, first of all, this book intrigued me because it said Thriver Guide. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about survival. It was about thriving, mm -hmm. and that really intrigued me, because in these existential times that we're in, a lot of people are talking about survival. Mm -hmm. And so why, why did you guys go in this direction? It's very interesting. Well, I, I think we were very deliberate about calling it a Thriver Guide. Uh, we were all feeling kind of the angst of surviving, and what we wanted to do was not come from this desperate, angst-ridden place, but rather point to the fact that Gabriola is a community that has so much expertise, uh, there's so much kindness and compassion and volunteer contribution, and, and we, wanted to, we wanted to focus in on everything the community provides, businesses, volunteer contributions, the gamut of it. So what was happening in the community on Gabriola that provoked this action, this step to build this book, to create mm -hmm. this book? Well, so um, I'm not sure if you remember, but in December of 2021, the Department of Can Canadian Heritage put out a grant. I think it was called Commemorate Canada. And it was about celebrating uh, community resilience and also helping communities start to reopen because we had just been locked down. And uh, so a number of organizations came together. This was spearheaded by the Gabriola Arts Council and, uh, and started talking about what could the application for this grant look like. And, um, and the focus for the grant was about celebrating community resiliency and, and bringing the community back out. We had gotten so used to being in our homes, being isolated, the introverts were loving it, <laughs> you know, um, and it was time for us to come back together the way that we used to. So this grant had a number of community partners, such as the museum, uh, People for a Healthy Community, Gabriel Arts Council, us, and a number of others. And, and this was our contribution, one of our contributions um, to the community and to uh, honor the uh, spirit of the grant. Right. Okay. Fascinating. Yeah. So I've looked through the book and there are five sections mm -hmm. that you've identified mm -hmm. for thriving mm -hmm. um, and they contain practical tips for thriving and building resilience. Mm -hmm. So there's the food without fairies, mm -hmm. there's water, the giver of life, there's shelter and supplies. Thriving mind, body, and spirit, and disaster ready today. So those are the five areas that you've identified in this book. Um, can you take us through each section? Sure. You know, we could start with food without fairies. What's in there that's helpful for the community? Well, you know, what I would love to do actually is uh, just to kind of give a sense of the, to even narrow it down to just five categories was incredibly hard because mm -hmm. there's you know when you talk about and think about surviving and thriving this is the tip of the iceberg we were trying to get to what are basic things that we should be thinking about and preparing um, ourselves for and um, we also had another challenge which is there's so much expertise in this community where do you even start mm -hmm. and 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 how can you say this is complete. So one of the things that we decided to do was to call it a workbook, right? Just to say to people, this is a first kick at the can. There's so many uh, people and businesses and not-for-profits uh, who we haven't, didn't have an opportunity to interview. And uh, so we want to recognize that this is incredibly incomplete. Okay. And, and also want to recognize the community members who 
stepped up and provided uh, their expertise and their contribution. So for sure, yeah. If you could tell us about some of those people, yeah. Um, so well, I mean, I think that it's one of those things. If I start with one, then I'll, <laughs> okay. uh, the other, you know, eighty-three will go. Hey, you didn't mention me. Right. So, okay. So a big group of people involved in this huge. in the community. We could not from many different sectors. We could not have done this without the community. Everything that is in here is community expertise. Mm -hmm. Like, you know. We weren't prepared to create a book and, and come across as the experts. What we wanted to do was say to the community, y you're the experts, help us give something back to the rest of us that, that knits us together. Mm -hmm. So I, just to go back to your initial question, the food without fairies, one of the things that we're seeing is the, uh, how expensive food is getting. And, um, and, and there's, such a, there's such a variety of farmers and food growers on this island and we wanted to open this up for people to go, hey, did you know? This is all about, hey, did you know? One of the things that I do want to point out is on page 10, the grocery program, I, I didn't realize that People for a Healthy Community runs a grocery program and uh, supports uh, community members with um, you know, whatever kind of food service issues they may be having. So that's a fantastic program that I think many of us are not aware of. Absolutely. And I mean, we do live on an island, so food security yeah. is definitely an issue yeah. for us, right? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so some of the stuff in here is dealing with that in terms of having the farm stands, yes. growers and markets, and yeah. growers and makers at the markets. Yep. Uh, the Aggie Co-op Saturday market, the Sunday market, yeah. so daily markets. So there's all sorts of information in here about what's going on in terms of food security yeah. on mm -hmm. the island. Yeah. And how to start growing your own, okay. starting small, right. not getting overwhelmed by it. Right, yeah. right. So it seems like there's sort of a psychological uh, layer in this book. Yes. It's not just like do the garden, no. you know, grow the vegetables and how to grow the no. vegetables. No, it's about empowering people. It's about empowering people to, uh, to take ownership of their own resiliency and even if you may feel overwhelmed, there's, there's a place that you can start. There's someone you can reach out to. Right, okay. And the next section is about water, which yes. of course on this island and many islands and everywhere, <laughs> water yeah. is of course the giver of life as, yes. as you said here. Um, so tell me what's in this section. So this, this section is, um, I love this section because I think that we often take water for granted. And there's actually a lot to being a rural um, and remote island community and making sure that you have a good source of water, it's safe for you to drink, how do you maintain it, what happens in case you have an emergency and your water runs out. So again, this is about uh, just giving people a tiny bit of info and, and getting them to start doing their own uh, research and resources. On page 41, it says, overwhelmed? Start here. Right. And I think many of us, we don't grow up knowing very much about water sources because when we live in urban centers, it just invisibly exactly. is there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. When you live on an island, um, there's there are different practices for living. Yeah. Um, that are essential, actually. Exactly. They're not choice. No. You've got to have a good well. Yes. Got to have a good septic system. Yeah. Got to have a good um, uh, cisterns. Yeah. And water pumps and yeah. all those things. And and what I'm learning the, about those I, right now. Well, I know. I think, and we we all learn. Uh, often when we don't necessarily want to. <laughs> Holy crap, I don't have water, right? right? It's kind of how it starts. Right, right. Yeah. So, so I think the other thing that I would like to point out is that each of these sections has space uh, for people to create their own water plan, their own food plan, their own whatever plan. And it's just to get people started. So it's kind of, it, there's a, that's the workbook. That's book. the workbook. That's the workbook yep. that allows you to actually write down some stuff yes. that might be helpful yes. in developing new habits. Yes, because what you need is not necessarily what I need. Right. So we, we have to give people the opportunity to customize 
and, and figure out their own needs and solutions to their own needs. Right. Okay. Yeah. So the next section is shelter mm -hmm. and supplies, mm -hmm. housing <laughs> and services, I guess. Yeah. Um, so yeah, tell us about this section. Well, you know, I think this was one of those sections where it was so hard for us to even know where to start and where to contain it. And really what helped us contain it was we only had a certain amount of budget and we still, you know, it's a 78 page book. Right. So with respect to shelter, I think we just, uh, we had just gone through that December, I guess it was last year where we lost power, we had lost communications, we had lost heat, and we really wanted to make sure that people had a section where they could start preparing themselves for the coming fall and winter right. and, and feel uh, like, okay, I've got this, I have enough wood, or whatever it is that they need. Right, their power source. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. And so that's about heat and power, yeah. solar, whether that's a solution for people. Yeah. The, the other section is the on page 52, the Love Local. Right. Right. So uh, every time we purchase locally, we're supporting neighbors, we're supporting community, we're supporting businesses. If we don't spend our money here, then those businesses can't survive and we're going to lose one more source that we then have to go off island. And so we really encourage everybody to shop local, if at all possible. And it's interesting you yeah. say that, though, because a lot of people do go off island because yeah. they find it too expensive yeah. to buy local. Yeah. So how do you, you know, will it's, this help, do you it, think? It's a conundrum. It's a conundrum. You know, I, 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 of course, you know, of course that is um, sometimes the case and sometimes it's not. Right. Um, and the other thing that we'd like to point people to is can the item that you're looking for, can you buy it used? Can you swap? Can you borrow? Do you actually have to purchase it? Right, yeah. right. Okay, yeah. excellent. And the next section is thriving mind, body, and spirit. Yeah. And that's very important, obviously. Well, I, we really wanted to draw attention to the fact that everything starts, begins, and ends with you. You know, like if you're not taking care of yourself uh, psychologically, intellectually, emotionally, and physically, you can have the best laid plans, but you're not going to thrive. Right. And we want people to thrive, whatever that means for them. Um, and there's so many, you know, this is called, I think, the island of um, the arts. That's right. And, and in, in my mind, I call it the island of healing and arts because there's so many amazing uh, health professionals on this island who offer different modalities, right. whether it's through essential oils or body work or uh, just integrated natural medicine and, and ways of being. There's a picture in here on page of 58 of, um, of a service provider who uh, works with horses. Mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. and just super wonderful fascinating work that sits on our island and um yeah and it's i see that you have here food nature movement art and connection yeah those are the five categories yes. in the thriving mind body and spirit yes and food is medicine nature is medicine and we sure know that yeah the swedes call it forest bathing we just call yes. it walking in the woods yeah i know <laughs> Anyway, okay, and the next section is art oh. is medicine. Is that right? No, no, that's no, the, part of that. Yeah, the the next, next section is disaster ready, ready today. Yeah. So tell me about that section. Well, I think this kind of speaks for itself. What This was another section that we really struggled with because there's a lot of really good information from the emergency services providers, from the regional district of Nanaimo, and uh, what we wanted to do in this section, we, and we actually pointed out, is this section isn't, and actually the whole booklet, isn't intended to duplicate anything. <laughs> it's to say, there are a ton load. I had to, your little potty mouth was gonna come up there. I had to <laughs> edit myself. There are, there are so many resources on this island, so we just wanna point you right. to yeah. Right. To in those directions. Not I, duplicate. Yeah. Right. And I notice, yes, you have the get started, which is about the grab and go bag. Yeah. 
um, Shirley Which, Nicholson. We've been yeah. doing some stuff with her because and the Gabriel Volunteer Fire Department. Yeah. So that's awesome. And places to, how to how to stay informed, which yeah. is really important. Yeah. And an emergency checklist. So that's pretty amazing. So at the end here, it's interesting. You say triumph. Is that the goal? Well, what's this, the goal? This this was the um, this was actually how Gabriel Arts Council. Uh, put in the application. This was the grant, the title for the grant, Together We Triumph. Okay. And this is the essence of the work that we did. Mm -hmm. uh, we really believe that together as a community, as an island, uh, we do triumph. We do survive. We do thrive. Um, and we can't do it alone. Right? And so I, I do, it, it, are, are you okay if I just express some thanks? Yeah. I really would like to thank um, the Gabriela Arts Council for uh, submitting an application for this grant, for bringing the community partners together. Uh, with respect to the actual book, Amanda LeMay was our project manager. She did an amazing job. Paula Brent uh, worked with the Chamber as our marketing and communications lead. And, uh, and you couldn't you couldn't get something this beautiful together without uh, Drifter Media's work. And so really want to appreciate the Chamber Board for moving forward with this project and allowing us to get it done. Great. And yeah. what's the feedback then? Or well, have you received much we feedback We have yet? received yeah. feedback and I actually reached out um, to kind of the community as to what they think. And so far, so we printed 1,500 copies. We have 80 left. Uh, it has gone off island. Other communities have grabbed them to so that they can replicate it for their own communities. Our community, um, I think, appreciates that this is the start of something, and and something because it would be great if we could maybe do a part two. We would just need funding. Right. Yeah. So it's a good start. So thank you for appreciating this little piece of work. Well, as I said, when I came across it about a month ago, I was very intrigued as soon as I, I picked it up because of that word that you chose. Because like you, I really love the idea of thriving rather than surviving. Yeah. And it's hard in these difficult times. So thank you to the Chamber for doing it and everybody mm -hmm. who was involved. And thank you for coming in today and oh, speaking with thank me. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. You are watching Life on Gabriela TV, community television, for you, by you.